Is it straight? I can't really tell from this angle. Yes, yeah, All right. Hello, I'm the curator for Vigilante Studios from Uptown Bronx, New York. The name of my brand is Vigilante Studios. Uh, I guess the aesthetics behind it is, I guess, brings the, um, the light back to the clothing. I feel like nowadays, with, um, with fashion oversaturated with the, the person behind the brand is bigger than the brand itself. That's why a lot of times I, I will never say my name, you won't see my face, because I want to keep it back to the original aesthetics as far as the clothing. That's what we're here for, the clothing, right? Um, I guess it's a mix of things. I, I know for one, as far as I hated being in the space where it's like, I like dope shit. I hated being in the space where as if I'm wearing something, I see somebody else wearing it, somebody else wearing it, somebody else wearing it. You go in a club or any type of venue, especially when the shit is fire, it's gonna be fire regardless for me. Granted, I'm, I catch on the things, I guess, before the wave, but when the wave comes, I still wanna wear my stuff, but I can't now, because it's oversaturated. So with that being said, I'm like, it's nothing better than to make your own stuff now, because now I keep it down to a limited, a limited amount, and that's for the consumer too, for the fact you, you can feel the same way I feel, as far as not having to worry about everybody having the same things you have on. We might all have the same brand, but we're gonna have some different pieces. Yeah, it's all, all, all models gonna be wearing masks. Anybody who's a part of the brand will be wearing masks because I don't, I don't care about who's behind the mask, who, what, what model, what famous person. I don't, I don't care about none of that. It's about the clothing. So we're gonna keep it back to the original essence of it, of fashion. That's a good question. Well, I guess in a sense, it's a, it's a form of expression, just being you, what you like, how to identify you what's unique to you, like, you can tell a lot about a person through what they're wearing. Like, I, I dress based on the mood, you feel me? I dress based on my mood. You can tell me a lot about the person without even you opening your mouth. It expresses you, your mood, how you feel, what you're into, what you're not into. I can tell a lot just by looking at your clothing. My personal style, it's not really definitive. I feel like it's, it's, it's very moody as far as like, I dress, it's not, it's not one style that I have. I, I could be wearing <laughs> all black goth attire one day and the next day be wearing some short shorts and a polo looking like I'm also going to yacht or something. It's just all about moving, for me at least. I have a lot of inspiration on a day to day. Like, it could be the smallest things. Like, for example, my, um, how my sleeving is going, going in the pants. This is inspired by spiral staircases. So, the architecture of a building inspired the way I. I put certain designs on all my clothing. Inspiration comes from anywhere. I can grasp inspiration for anything. It's kind of subjective in a way. I could look at the park, look at the trees in here right now and just my mind just a million, going like a million miles a minute trying to how, formulate how to put it together in, in an aesthetic fashion way. Any advice I can give you, because I'm still fairly new to this, I would say is just do it. That's what's the hardest part. But once you get over that first, that first hump, you actually in that field, everything else is like second nature. It's, it's, it's simple to be honest, as far as, far as the designing go. Of course, there's other aspects to it, but the hardest thing is to do it. And that goes with business in general. The hardest thing is to start the business. Once you, once you pass that step, everything else is a piece of cake comparison to starting the business itself. It took me five years to start. <laughs> Today makes a month and one day, but five years of manifestation, finally my fruits is coming to labor. The space that my brand is in now, I'm in a very happy place, because like I said, a lot of stuff I'm doing is not definitive, so like, infinite amount of like thought process that goes into it. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not limited to one thing. Uh, I see myself in the future. I see myself having my own store. Like, I, it's only my first collection. And I already know New York is mine. So as, as far as the rest of the world, they just have to catch on to what I'm doing. A lot of what I'm doing is very eclect um, eclectic as far as like so futuristic. It hasn't, at least, at least in my eyes, I haven't seen it done. I, I suppose I'm making my own clothing. I, it's stuff I'm seeing that I was one to wear, I was one to like, but it's not being made. <laughs> as long as, as far as I see my brand, like I, I classify myself as as luxury rebellion. That's like my classification as my brand. I don't want to be, I guess, dubbed in the luxury streetwear brand, streetwear luxury brand. I felt like that was a almost like a condescending little bro thing they did to like people like Fair of God and Jerry Lorenzo and and rude, things like that. As far as the high fashion people that's in these high places, like, okay, see what you guys are doing. But yeah, you're gonna call you street fashion, street luxury, you're not, you're not one of us, but you're, you're, you're in the same the same area as we are, the same arena, but you're not competing with us. I don't, 
So I feel like it's a kind of condescending thing because at the same time, these guys are getting their same fabric design where you get, you get people with loose photography fabric design or Gucci fabric, they fabric design, the same places, the same um, manufacturers. Like I said, I feel like it's condescending. So that's why I go about the approach as luxury rebellion. Like I'm going against the norm as far as the, the higher ups, so as, as they deem fashion to be, or as they deem luxury to be, I, I should say. It's like, okay, I might not be on the, I might not be next to you, but I'm gonna be across the street for sure. We're gonna be the same block, no matter what. <laughs> I think what I love most about being a designer is just the fact of freedom to express yourself. There's no limitations on it. You can take it anywhere, because art is subjective as a whole. Because at the end of the day, fashion is a part of art, and there's, there's, no, there's no classification or limitations on art. I think that's what I like about it the most. I could live out my wildest fantasies on my clothing, like <laughs> my wildest desires. I could paint a picture and it still be considered fashion. I'm the curator of Vigilante Studios. That's mine. Everything I'm doing is art pieces. Instagram is Vigilante underscore studios. Great for being in the space that I'm in, you feel me? I have a strong team around me. I have a lot of people who's definitely into the arts, whether it's music or um, painting, for example. I have a guy who's next to blow and so far as the music goes my boy SPL one of the biggest artists coming out the Bronx right now like legit like he's, he's getting he's getting his um, flowers from all like I guess the local greats I have another boy named Kamani and I say this man is like almost creating a new renaissance with his paintings this guy is like it's unfathomable just think the stuff that he does and his, his ideas so being in the space with these guys it's, it's hard not to be great you feel me <laughs>